I speak to you in the name of the living God, blessed Trinity, and lover of your souls. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The cuttlefish releases a murky fluid in the face of her attacker, suggesting to the bigger fish that danger is imminent rather than dinner. This deception allows that little fish to slip away unscathed. There are small birds who, when the shadow of the hawk passes by, fall onto their backs and prop their legs up in the air, deceiving that larger bird into thinking they're dead, making them undesirable to the hunter looking for fresh meat. In his book, Jesus and the Disinherited, the philosopher theologian Howard Thurman reveals the primal nature of deception. And not just for the animal kingdom, but for the human kingdom. A little girl feigns sleep when her mother opens the bedroom door to see if she's brushed her teeth. A small boy in the classroom raises his hand because he really has to go to the bathroom just as the teacher begins asking about last night's homework. An administrator tells his supervisor that he loves her new haircut, when in reality, he doesn't have an opinion about it. He just wants to keep her on his good side. Deception writes Thurman, is perhaps the oldest of all the techniques by which the weak have protected themselves against the strong. The weak have survived by fooling the strong. This morning, Jesus is looking pretty weak by human standards. The political hawks are circling, and Jesus is just a small bird in the eyes of the Roman Empire. I imagine Pontius Pilate is used to men in chains taking a legs-up-in-the-air posture with him. But that doesn't appear to be the, the posture that Jesus enters the room with. Why? Well, because the first question Pilate asks Jesus is if he is a king. If Jesus is the king of the Jews, Pilate wants him to know that Jesus has no jurisdiction over him. Jesus assures Pilate that not only is he not king of the Jews, Jesus' kingdom isn't from around here. So you are a king. These are Pilate's final words today, and I wonder if he asks that question with a slowly forming bead of sweat upon his brow. It must be disconcerting for Pilate to interrogate someone that might be an equal to his political stature, let alone a better. I don't think Pilate can make out whether Jesus is weak or strong. Pilate isn't sure who is on top in this conversation because the truth Jesus speaks sounds like nonsense to Pilate, who is used to the cat and mouse game of political deception. So Jesus makes his final argument clear. Only those listening for truth will hear my voice. Jesus' words point Pilate to a heavenly kingdom that is different from the animal kingdom or the human kingdoms of this world. To which kingdom do you belong? I asked myself that question more than a dozen years ago. It was my first semester of graduate school, and the weight of the deceptions in my life were bearing down on me. The seemingly inane conversations I'd had over and over again with family, with friends, were ringing in my ears, 
Will your friend be coming to holiday dinner again? Have you met any cute boys lately? What did you do this weekend? And within them, every answer I gave to each question was spoken in half-truths. Yes, my friend will come to dinner again for the fifth year in a row. No, I haven't met the right boy yet. Yes, I traveled four hours again to hang out with my friend this weekend. See, for years, I had casually and publicly gone on dates with men while having a real and secret relationship with a woman. Lying about myself and my relationship was turning me into someone who lies. And as far as I knew, a person who lived that way for that long is called a liar. The penalty of deception, writes Howard Thurman, is to become a deception with all sense of moral discrimination vitiated. A man who lies habitually becomes a lie, and it is increasingly impossible for him to know when he is lying and when he is not. I remember the day of my reckoning. I felt sick to my stomach. I skipped class. I sat at home in front of the fireplace for hours thinking. I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't live two lives. I didn't want another lie to pass my lips, and that meant I would first have to stop lying to myself. As I sat and watched the flames, imagining all in me I wanted burned away, I whispered for the very first time aloud, I'm gay. And I knew it was the truth. I was so afraid of the social vulnerability of not being straight. I couldn't imagine walking into a pub holding my girlfriend's hand, let alone introducing her as someone more than a friend at a family dinner. I was playing the cuttlefish card. Every night out, every holiday, I was releasing a murky fluid of distraction in the face of all the big fish hoping the heterosexuals wouldn't eat me for dinner. That day, I decided I didn't want to belong to the cuttlefish kingdom anymore. To which kingdom do you belong? And is it the kingdom you want to belong to? If you're not sure, perhaps the place to begin is to examine the way you engage in conversations with those whom you think are powerful. Is your tactic to speak the truth or to use deception to war for power? Pilate assumes he and Jesus are warring for power. Perhaps one of the best-known military strategists, Sun Tzu, wrote, All human warfare is based upon deception. The last words of Pilate in this conversation are actually erased by the lectionary today, but I think that they reveal Pilate's true affiliation to the tactics of deception utilized by the kingdoms of this world. What is truth, he scoffs, in unrecognition. When Jesus indicates that truth is the only way into his kingdom. What is truth? This is the question that sparks Howard Thurman's research. Jesus was a Jew in the Roman Empire, a small bird amidst the hawks. Thurman wondered how what the prophets and apostles were saying about Jesus could possibly be true, that Jesus committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. But when he examined the Gospels, Thurman found that Jesus always spoke with an unwavering sincerity. He spoke with integrity, 
to a completely different set of values than the kingdoms of this world. His yes meant yes, and his no meant no. When Pilate asked Jesus point blank what he had done to deserve a hearing in front of a governor, All Jesus had to work with was a web of lies that had been strung together about him to bring these false charges. So Jesus just didn't respond. He didn't try to explain. He remained silent because silence was the sincerest answer he could give to a bogus question. And that lack of defensive deception surprised Pilate. He didn't know what to do with Jesus, so he washed his hands of the situation. When sincerity and genuineness are present, the kingdoms of this world have no defense. The claims of position and advantage that one human being tries to take from another are reduced to zero. That's what Thurman tells us. In the face of unwavering sincerity, he writes, instead of relation between the weak and the strong, there is merely a relationship between human beings. A man is a man, no more, no less. The awareness of this fact marks the supreme moment of human dignity. That is what we find in Jesus even moments before his murder. Supreme human dignity, brought out by his adherence to sincerity. To which kingdom do you belong? That is the question we must contend with on Christ the King Sunday. Because today is the day we celebrate Jesus' kingship. If he is your king, it is a day of celebration. If he is not your king, it is a day of reckoning. This is the last Sunday of the church calendar year. And so this feast day has an eschatological dimension to it, which means it points us to the end of this world and anticipates Christ's second coming, the inauguration of that other world he spoke about today. Jesus invited Pilate into this kingdom by inviting him to speak the truth, but Pilate would not do it. He distanced himself from Jesus' Judaism And then he distanced himself from Jesus' death. To which kingdom do you belong? And is it the kingdom you want to belong to? I have to ask this question of myself every day. We all do. The seemingly inane conversations we have with one another each day will take us deeper into one kingdom or the other. Will we be liars or will we become truth tellers? Jesus is calling us from that heavenly kingdom where the war of deception has already been won and sincerity has already preserved his dignity and your dignity, and my dignity, and the dignity of every human being.